this is my attempt at uh, flipping a classroom. Um, so let's just go ahead and do it. Uh, we're talking about um, work today. Um, and this is the main things I want to get out of it. But, uh, for today, I want us to be able to define what work is and then be able to use the idea of work and some questions. Questions one, five, six, seven, you'll be doing in class. Um, okay, so let's get started. Um, work, you should have already done the mini lab with the pulleys. And I'm hoping what you should have found out with that is um, using the pulley, you can lift a heavy object. And depending on how many turns around, uh, how many rope up, how, man, how much rope down uh, you have, you can either apply a lot of force, um, it would be hard work to, to lift it, uh, but you only have to pull the rope a short distance, or you can have lots of turns, lots of turns, lots of turns, and then you're applying a, a much lighter force, uh, a, a reduced force, but you have to pull a lot more rope. Basically, what we're getting to is the fact of uh, force is inversely proportional to distance, where we can either have a big force uh, and a short, small little distance, or I can have a small force, but I have a big distance, um, they're inversely proportional. Now, the magic thing is this constant right there. I just put it as K for this argument. Uh, if I multiply the force and the distance together, if I just you know, multiply both sides here by distance, if I multiply force and distance together, I'm always going to get the same number. Uh, and that number is what we actually call um, work. I think it's a good uh, name for it myself because at the end of the day, you have to do the same amount of work. Like you can either lift a heavy thing a short distance or you can uh, lift a light thing a big distance uh, you still have to do the same amount of work all right let me pause it here okay i'm back good so uh work what do we need to know about work well the way we calculate it is uh force multiplied by distance that's how we calculate work now there's some more bits um about that we'll get to in a second um units what units is uh work well when you look at it, the unit of force is a newton, the unit of distance is a meter, so the unit should just be a newton meter. Um, actually, when we consider a newton is a kilogram meter per second squared, uh, multiply that by a meter, you end up with this unit here, kilogram meter squared per second squared. That's the, the unit of work, kilogram meter squared per second squared. Reality is that's, uh, that's a bit of a mouthful, so we don't call it that, we actually call it a joule after James Jewell, uh, he did uh, a lot of the work, um, <laughs> a lot of the work on work. Um, so it's uh, one joule is a kilogram meter squared per second squared. Now, um, I do say work is a scalar quantity. That is a very important point. Um, and it's kind of counterintuitive because when you look up here, you've got force, which is a vector. Distance or displacement is a vector as well. Um, so why is work not a vector? Um, the reality is it's down to the mathematics of it, um, stuff we don't really need to know about at this level, but when you multiply vectors together, there's two ways of multiplying vectors together. There's a dot product, which is um, what we've done here, and you end up with a scalar, or there's what's called a cross product, uh, cross product, you end up with a vector, and we will be doing that when we deal with um, talk uh, for one. But for work, it's actually a dot product, force times distance, so it ends up being a scalar. Okay, for this next section, uh, I'm actually going to utilize my coffee cup here um, uh, <laughs> to, to try and prove a point. Um, if I lift my coffee cup up into the air, I am doing work on it. I am applying a force. The force is a force equal to the force of gravity because it's moving up at a nice constant speed. And I'm moving at a distance, um, just literally the height I, I did it. So I'm doing work on this system. I am doing work by lifting this up. Here's the funny thing, though. If I start lowering this down, I'm not doing any work on it. In fact, I am. The force I'm applying is I'm, I'm applying a force upwards, but the distance of travel is actually downwards. Um, it's a negative distance of travel. So that actually gives us a negative amount of work. Uh, which is a curious thing to think about. Um, but even though work is a scalar, it can be positive or negative, which is somewhat counterintuitive, but that's okay. Work can be positive or negative, even though it's a scalar. The way you need to think about it is, uh, am I doing work on the system or is the system doing work on me? Right now, I am doing work by lifting this up into the air, but if I let it go down, 
then actually I don't really have to do any work on that. It kind of wants to do it itself. So that acts as a negative um, work. So what we're saying is when we say um, work equals force times distance, the force and the direction of the distance have to be parallel. They have to be in the same direction. Um, and that's how we're going to get our negative number. Um, that being said, if I get my coffee cup and move it from side to side, well, the reality is this is just motion, right? This is motion. There's no real force being applied. There is a force acting downwards. That's the force of gravity. I am pushing it up to overcome that force of gravity. So I am, I guess, applying the force. But the distance I'm moving it is completely 90 degrees to the direction of travel. So I'm not actually doing any work. Unless I lift it up or down, I'm not doing any work. And this is where the cosine comes in because if you can just think about it, if I'm moving it side to side to side, the actual angle from the force I'm applying, which is upwards, is 90 degrees from the distance to the force I'm applying. Um, cosine of 90 degrees equals zero. So I've done no work right there. Cosine 90 degrees, that becomes a zero. Um, so regardless of the force, regardless of the distance, if I'm not applying it in the direction of the displacement, then I do no work. Very good. Let's pause this again. All right, let's do some uh, problems then. Let's uh, see if this works. Uh, problem by Martin here. I lift a one kilogram book from the floor to above my head at a height of two meters, and then I put it on a shelf one meter off the ground. How much work do I do? All right, well, I have somewhat rigged up my little whiteboard so we can do this problem on the whiteboard. I'm going to move my coffee out the way. So let's say I've got a book here. Um, this is one kilogram. Let me just check. You can actually see that. Yeah, you can just about see that. Yeah, it could be, could be a bit better. There we go. One kilogram. I lift it two meters into the air. So work equals force times distance cosine theta. You know what? These are going in the same direction. The the the, the force I'm overcoming is gravity. So I, I'm actually applying a force in that direction to overcome the force of gravity coming down. So the um, uh, that is actually zero degrees. So that equals zero degrees. So that's going to equal the force of one kilogram. That'll be uh, uh, 10 newtons times the distance of two meters cosine of zero. Cosine of zero is conveniently one. That's just going to end up to be 20 newton meters, or as we said, joules. Now, once I'm up here, I'm going to go back down again, one meter. Well, I'm going to do the same thing again. Work equals force times distance cosine theta. Here's the thing, though. This time, as I'm dropping it down, the angle is actually kind of 180 degrees. Well, the angle of uh, 180 degrees, cosine of 180 degrees is negative 1. And this time, um, I've got a 10 newton force. And I am going downwards one meter. And the uh, I don't have to put this as a negative. This is distance, not displacement. Um, I don't have to put this as negative because actually the cosine of 180 gives me that sign negative 1. So now I have a total force of negative 10 joules. So here's the thing. If I lift it up 20 and then drop it down, correction, if I lift it up 2 meters, then lower it down 1 meter, I do 20 joules of work to get it up to 2 meters. I do negative 10 joules of work to get it down. So the overall answer is 10 joules. Now, while I'm at it, I've got a slide to show you, and I'm going to put it back on the little what's it here. Okay, um, here's a thing we do need to talk about conservative and non-conservative forces. If you remember, we talked about forces. We said that there are contact forces and there are field forces. Gravity uh, is perhaps the most common field force because um, you don't have to literally be touching something for it to occur. It, it happens in what we call a vector field. So here's a magic thing. With a field force, all we really care about is the start place and the end place. I could do a bunch of work lifting it up here, and then I'll do negative work going down here. I would have done the same amount of work as if I just lifted it straight up. Um, what I'm trying to say is if I just move a 
an object in a gravitational field from point A to point B. Doesn't matter which way I go, I can go around, 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 but I'm still doing the exact same amount of work as if I just lifted it straight up. It doesn't matter the path I take um, to get from A to B, I'm always going to do the same amount of work. This is in a field force. Let me just check what I've got. Contact forces, that's not the case. Contact force is quite different because, uh, let me just kind of hold this up. If I've got me a coffee cup there, if I want to move my coffee cup, put it on there, then I want to move it that way, and then move it that way. Well, I'm fighting friction every single one of these legs, right? I'm doing a lot more work than if I just move my coffee cup from there to there. Let me just do that again. I want to get, let's move that out of the way, just my little ball marker. I want to get my coffee cup from here to here. If I go the long route, I'm doing a lot more work than if I just moved it in a straight way. This is what we mean by saying it's not a conservative force. Okay, let me just stop it here for a second. So, um, I pressed the button. I don't know if this is going to work, if this is still going to record, but let's do another problem. We'll just do the top one for now. I have to push a 30 kilogram sled across the snow for a distance of 10 meters. The coefficient of kinetic friction is 0 0.1. If the sled moves at a constant velocity, how much work do I do? Okay, so let's look at me a uh, little whiteboard. I, I, you know what? This is the second time I recorded this, and I've just left it up there from the first time. Um, so let's have a look at my whiteboard. <laughs> okay, so what have I got here? Well, I've got my little diagram. I've got my sled here. I drew it as a box. I know there's a force of gravity acting down. I've got the force of uh, normal force acting up, which is going to be equal to mass times gravity. Um, and then if that's the case, then the force of friction is going to be mu times mass times gravity. The force I'm applying is going to be, let's say, to the right, and the distance it travels is 10 meters to the right. Um, so that's all the information I know. I've just gone ahead and jotted that down. What I do know, though, is I know that I. I I asked you to find the work. So I know the equation is work equals force times distance times cosine theta. All right. It's moving at a constant velocity. That's a good thing because if it's moving at a constant velocity, that means um, the applied force and the force of friction are equal and opposite. They're going to cancel each other out. So I can actually use the force of friction um, as the value for my applied force that's going in that direction. Distance is 10 meters. That's easy enough. Um, but the force is going to the right. The distance is also going to the right, uh, which means that the angle equals zero degrees, which is good because cosine of zero degrees equals one. So when we put that in, uh, here's the equation, force times distance equals cosine of the angle. So the force, force applied is going to be equal to the mu times mass times gravity. The distance is the distance. Uh, cosine of zero is one. So once I put all of that in, uh, put my numbers in, I end up with 300 joules. Um, point one is the coefficient of friction. 30 kilogram is the mass. Gravity is, let's call it 10. Distance is 10. So uh, you multiply all them together, you get 300. And we can just make sure we've done it right because I got a kilogram. Um, for the mass, I got meter per second squared for the acceleration due to gravity. Uh, and I have 10 meters, which is another meter, so I have a kilogram meters squared per second squared. Okay, I think that'll do. Um, what we'll do is we'll uh, talk about this um, in class. As I say, this is a trial period. Uh, I don't know if you're still awake. I, I got uh, me, my dog and my cat here. They both fell asleep. Um, clearly not that big into physics, but that's okay. That's okay. They are animals. Um, anyway, okay, we'll talk about this. Uh, come on with any questions, and yeah.